morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to all who are joining us through Facebook Live. Um, thank you for coming today and welcome to the memorial service for Carl Owen Welkman. We come together today to celebrate Carl's life. And so let's begin this morning with a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for this time to come together and celebrate the life of Carl, as well as to grieve together our losses. Help us today as we remember Carl as the, the disciple of Jesus that he was. We take comfort that he is walking with Jesus on the streets of Golden Heaven. Holy Spirit, comfort all here today as we remember Carl and the impact that he has had on each of our lives. And we just pray these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Which one of you would like to go first? Emily, should we do these first or with? Okay. <laughs> so we want to welcome uh, Mark Velkner, Carl's brother, and I've gotten to know Mark a little bit over the last few weeks and the time that I've been spending down in Elmore, and uh, he's a precious brother. And so Mark is going to come and share some, uh, some of his heart and some of his thoughts concerning his brother Carl. Good to see you here today. We are here to remember Carl Owen Norman Veltner. Slipped one in there. <laughs> Those were Owen and Norman were uh, our father's uh, brothers' names. Um, my name is Mark Veltner. I'm his younger uh, brother. What I'm about to share with you is mostly a little bit about growing up times with Carl in Carl's life and my experiences towards the end of his uh, end of his life. Carl was born March 22, 1949, being a middle child of Mel and Sylvia Veltner, with big sister Marge, three years older, and younger brother Mark, six years younger. Um, he had humble beginnings and was raised being a confirmed evangelical Lutheran, uh, with parents who were active and committed to church in practicing their beliefs. Well, you know what they say about middle children, if you look up the word rambunctious. <laughs> in the dictionary, um, you would find Carl's personality fully defined and maybe a picture of him too. He was inter interested in just about everything in nature. He'd collect insects, critters, and snakes. At the time of Carl's birth, we lived in Thienesville, Wisconsin. On our family's in-town little homestead, we had two houses there. Uh, Back in the day, you used to build one to just kind of stay in until you got the second one built. And uh, next to a, a two-acre swamp with a freshwater creek, which he explored for book trout later in life. My Aunt Esther told me this memorable story of my brother Carl. It's late 1950, the summer of 1951. Carl is only two and a half years old. He's outside in the yard with Mom and, and Marge, Sister Marge. But mom had to go into the front house for some reason. I don't know, phone rang, the wash, whatever. Um, and, uh, where, where did I go? Oh, yeah. And uh, with mom gone, Carl immediately sees the opportunity to explore. And so he escapes climbing undaunted up a large, leaning willow tree that leaned out over the, over the swamp, about 20 feet up and 20 feet out. He's two and a half years old. <laughs> well, much to his surprise, you know, it occurred to him that he actually got to where he wanted to go 
but then he didn't know how he was going to get back down. <laughs> so, you know, he yelled to Sister Marge, and Marge goes running into the house. She's five years old to go get mom. Mom comes out of the house, horrified at the situation, and now no one knows how he's going to get down. Well, mom's totally lost her mind. Now he's scared, screaming. And uh, my Aunt Esther sees what's going on from outside of, uh, through the window, and, but she can't help. So she summons grandma out of the rear house. And grandma comes out and she sends everyone away. She just get out of Carl's sight. And starts calmly talking to Carl to calm him down. <clears throat> she encourages him and just gives direction to guide him. Letting him know that he knows how he got up there. So he already knows how to get down. Continues to encourage him and he makes the moves necessary to lower himself to where he could be reached safely by others. So that story is pretty much Carl in a nutshell to me. Carl was reaching out, investigating beyond the limitations, then seeking direction on how to bring him back to safely. safety. <clears throat> Ultimately, our family moved a couple times, and finally grew, uh, we ended up growing up in Oconomowoc, Wisconsin, which is just west of Milwaukee. Carl enjoyed sports, having excellent eyesight. He was fast, strong, and from his training in ballet, dance, and gymnastics, yeah, you got it right, ballet, <laughs> was body, body conscious and very athletic. He excelled in Little League baseball and later in middle school, wrestling and football. But something would happen in school that would shorten that ladder. Fairly certain it had to do with repeat suspensions due to jumping out of the second story window to, to find freedom. By high, school, by high school, he was in full bloom. He wanted, to, he wanted to be creative, whether it be art, sculpture, or acting. And all of which he acquired a taste that was never really satisfied. He longed to express and convey that inner angst that he had carried. It couldn't be expressed in words. He had some rewards of appreciation in these efforts, but for some unknown reason, he never sustained the work necessary to become an, a full artist. That was a regret he expressed late in life. Our father's business was in home furnishing and uh, carpet and flooring sales. So us kids experienced you know, measuring for carpet, uh, preparation of carpet, and the installation. Carl had been learning carpet laying skills with my father's input and with his business partner's teaching, becoming highly skilled and accomplished installer of many different carpet types and flooring. Tragically, Tragically, our father, Melvin, passed away in February of 1972 at home from lung cancer. We all had lessons to learn from this experience, but it would not be together learning them. Families often can split apart after an event like this, and we did. Uh, Carl was totally crushed. Spirit was crushed. He did not know what to do, but was again thinking his life was over rather than what it could be. After reaching his deepest anguish, he found some solace in a connection when he had a personal a spiritual experience in a secret place with Jesus Christ. At the same time, her mom, Sylvia, what was it? Uh, was attending evangelical meetings at uh, Swanson's estate, and that was connected to Daystar Ministries out of Illinois. Carl, 23, became involved with Daystar Ministries. Once there, Carl met new like-minded friends and lived amongst them having a humble life and healing. And this is where he met and married first wife Shelley Gazy. They would begin a beautiful family, having Nicholas, Morgan, and Emily came from this union. Although there would be continued, or there continued to be life challenges, his connection with Jesus would ebb and flow, but would not be lost. Although the marriage over time was. Carl and I tried to be in contact periodically. Years could pass as sometimes Carl would isolate 
And of course, we were both busy raising our own families. So, but once answered, that phone call just seemed like it was last week, you know, that we had spoke. And after that, time passed, and that's kind of how it went for a long time. Our mom, Sylvia, died in 2002 from Alzheimer's. Our sister, Marge, died in 2011 from a 10-year battle with brain cancer. Another two years later for husband Bob. But Carl and I stayed in touch for another year after March. And then one day he calls me out of the blue. He was cheery, but he's whispering like, this is a secret. Yeah, yeah. He goes, hey. <laughs> I met this gal that works down the street at the thrift shop. <laughs> and I'm having coffee with her later. <laughs> of course, he's talking about Brenda. <laughs> I'm kind of sweet on her. She's cute, and we have common beliefs. Thinking of settling down, Mark, and, and making another start, he wants to know what I think. Well, I just told him that he could use some happiness in life, and if he's done the footwork, to make it the same. Well, <clears throat> Kyle and Brenda get married, I think it's June of 2012, and begin their life story together. I couldn't attend that wedding, uh, but of course, this is where I lost contact with Carl again. You know, he's busy. And so, uh, you know, we, we just lost touch. I mean, um, you know, and it, it's just sometimes that's what happens. Well, Christmas Eve, 2018, late at night, I get the phone call, a phone call ringing, you know, and I'm like, Who's this? It must be a telemarketer. You know, they always call when they know you're home. Here it is, Carl. Hey. I don't know why I always do it. Hey. Bet you weren't expecting to hear from me tonight, were you, Shark? He used to call me Shark, and I'd call him Snarl. There was, it was a really long pause because I was just totally shocked. I mean, I was ready to hire a private investigator to find where he was. <laughs> and what he didn't know was that he just gave me the best Christmas gift I had in years. We had been overcoming at least five years where the challenges within our family, I was doing it on my own, with my wife, of course. But I needed family, and I needed him. So we talked for over an hour, catching up, and both sharing past life challenges and the actions taken towards finding solutions and accepting life on life's terms. This time was different. Not only were we older, but we were wiser. We had both learned what commitment truly meant in keeping contact now, and we did. I finally visited Carl late summer 2019, meeting Brenda in their Elmore home for a couple of days. I told him I'd be back next summer. We have traveled such different paths, finding that we came to common truth and understanding in life. We've had many talks about what we learned, acceptance of life's challenges and experienced, and the lessons that we needed to understand and place into our lives so they weren't repeated. The role that our faith and how it ultimately became sustaining belief helped us. That if we do not seek a lesson while having a challenging experience, as we walk through that challenge, we'll miss the opportunity to learn a lesson. And that if we do not learn a lesson, that challenge is just going to come back right around and uh, reoccur until we ultimately do learn the lesson. I mean, haven't you experienced cyclical challenges in your life? Over the years, Carl and I were learning this separately. Yet finding common solutions, finally we became true brothers and equal in, our, in each other's eyes. Going through some things, I found three old excerpts that Carl had written that I'd like to share it with you today. I identified with these statements to be true in my life and what we had both been learning and sharing with each other. <clears throat> excerpts of Carl, number one. And this is by his hand. My duty and privilege is to love people, all people, 
and provide the grace through which God works to change them. To love is the ultimate consummate freedom. To know and allow God's love to move through my life is the greatest joy. Number two, beauty is connected to truth, and truth is much deeper than guilt and shame. God is truth, and he sees perfectly. He sees all he is. I would like to experience creation, a creative effort or activity, intimately conjoined with God. To know that I may be holding the brush, so to speak, but he moves the arm. I'm naked before him, as is everyone else. Therefore, everyone is naked. We chose to be clothed with shame. And number three, he wants intimacy with mankind and the works of his hands. What rapture to know him by his spirit. He doesn't hide from those who love him and seek him. Rather, he's captivated and wonders at our love and devotion towards him. And I get to experience him finally in a day that will never end, in all the days of life on earth. Closing, we celebrate Carl's life for his honest intensity in loving all the people he cared about and that were around him. He loved his wife Brenda and daughters Christine, Paula, Jill, and little Elena. He loved his children. Nicholas Morgan, Emily and their mother Shelley, and her family. Being very pleased that they all came to visit with him, Carl demonstrated what hard work can accomplish and its value in life, a lesson recognized and not lost by his children. The family he was born into and raised in with Mel, Sylvia, Marge, and my family. He loved the people he met along his journey in ministry, for without them he wouldn't have or be who he is. He loved being a part of Life Family Church with both pastors Jim and Michelle, their family and fellowship. Neighbors Chris and Brittany Parker and their children, they were like family to him. And so many more that I cannot name them all. Carl loved being in and a part of nature, all creative arts, listening to music, crafting, and as a challenge as it can be while on this earth, he loved to serve others as, as Jesus taught. We extend a special appreciation to the care and support provided by Carl's hospice team. Ms. Terry, Alyssa, Joyce, nurses, and services of Heidi and Melissa for maintaining Carl's integrity and dignity in this time of dire need. If you ever got close to Carl, and I mean getting in an eyeball embrace, you would absolutely know that he loved you and he forgave everything. Or forgiven sometimes was at your expense with a smirk that you have sometimes in a car week. And that was car. Thank you. Father. 
and for me too. Um, and his, you know, um, last week. Um, so I was honored to be near to my father uh, during that time in the last weeks of his life. And I'm equally honored to speak to you now. Um, among people that he loved, among his uh, members of his church. So I'm just going to tell you about some of the things I know, very simply. My father was a rich man. <laughs> he told me so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, surrounded by my brothers and I. <clears throat> he looked at me, kind of the way Mark was describing so sincerely and shared with me a deep satisfaction that he was truly, truly wealthy. Amen. Carl and his children, Nicholas Morgan and myself, not for what we had done or a vision of what he wanted us to be or could be, but just as we were, he asked for nothing else. He told me simply in those last weeks, you kids know what is right. <clears throat> you know what's true. Um, my father, he enjoyed a lifelong friendship with my mother, who is sending her warmest thoughts to us all from her home this morning or noon. <laughs> My parents truly loved each other, and that was a comfort to me to know that. I had the delight of holding the phone to my dad's ear um, while my mom called and recounted some of their happy memories from their marriage. Jokes, you know, inside jokes, <laughs> truly inside uh, stories even songs, a little song that they had together about carpet laying, <laughs> which was in German. Um, <laughs> Carl was creative. Um, that's evident from the joy he took from music, singing, lyrics, words, 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 always words, um, comedy, storytelling. I was thinking about that while Mark was speaking. Um, one of the best things about the last month, which it's hard to describe that as the best month of my life, but maybe, <laughs> was that I got to spend more time with my dad's brother, Mark, and it reminds me so much of him and including the storytelling. So <laughs> anyway, um, my dad's imitations, dancing, uh, poetry, literature, architecture, Styles, I mean, fashion, um, the arts, animals, nature. Uh, I knew my father was an artist from his sketches, painting, sculpture. And he enjoyed those things until this last day. Um, when my brothers came and visited my dad, um, he came with this idea. He wanted to get up out of bed and go to the uh, go to the door and sit uh, outside with them, just feel the breeze, be with them, listen to the birds, and um, that was so important to him. And he did just what he wanted to do up until the end. He enjoyed the quiet and peace and my last time with him was just that. And uh, I'm just gonna close by reading from his morning devotion, which is just part of his routine, you know, make coffee and do his devotion. It's so funny, it's marked with a birch bark bookmark, <laughs> which is just like him. Um, I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but, and I'm sorry, this is, Older, and this is Billy Graham, so there's a lot of <laughs> the language. Um, this is what, you know, I, I read 
Sam, this is my last time with my dad, and I'll just end it with this. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh, it maketh rich, and he addeth, he addeth no sorrow with it. When he giveth quietness, who then can make trouble? And when he hideth his face, who then can behold him? Salvation belongeth unto the Lord, thy blessing is upon thy people. How great is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee. And I didn't make it until the end of that sentence. So, my dad was just a very special man, and I just want to thank everyone again for recognizing that and for loving him as much as I know that, you know, me and brothers do. And thank you. It is my challenge to follow after Mark and Emily and keep my composure and eulogize the man that we're here to honor today. <clears throat> so, uh, please pray for me as I attempt to do that this morning. Carl Owen Volkner, age 71, of Elmore, passed away peacefully on June the 26th at his home in Elmore. He was born on March 22, 1949, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, as his brother shared. And I have the honor of sharing the eulogy for my brother today. If you look in the dictionary, a eulogy is a speech or it's a piece of writing that praises someone or something very highly, typically someone who has just passed away, who has just died. So today I have the honor to offer a eulogy for a man that I personally highly esteemed and valued. And I want you to know before I begin this, there will be many things that overlap, and I did not speak with Emily, nor did I speak with Mark, concerning these things that I will say during this eulogy. So, the Bible says, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let everything be established. So what you heard from them, you'll probably hear some of that from me, so you know it's true. Okay? <laughs> Carl Veltner was a man of many talents, skills, and abilities. He was one of the most multifaceted people that I have ever met. He was not only interesting and gregarious, he was highly intelligent. And he would even express that to you himself. <laughs> he could have a discussion on any topic, anything. More than that, he was a man of God. And he used his talents, skills, and abilities to honor God and to bless other people. And probably just about every person or every person in this room today has been blessed in one way or another by Carl. So as I shared this eulogy, and I was trying to gather my thoughts very late last night, um, and honor Carl, here are my thoughts today. <clears throat> when I want someone to talk gardening with me, I think of Carl. He was my gardening mentor, and if you know me very well, you would know that I absolutely have to have a mentor when it comes to gardening. And Carl taught me how to make Rabbit poop tea for fertilizer and to pour it on my plants. I have carpet paths in my garden today, a old carpet that we tore out of our home and cut into strips because of Carl. Because whatever Carl told me that had to do with gardening, I did. Because he was the master. When I want someone to talk carpet with me, I think of Carl. 
He was an expert. And any time we were downstairs in this fellowship room, which would be hundreds of hours uh, as a church family, I would find him cutting strings from the frame carpet down there with a pair of kid scissors that he snatched from the children's ministry <laughs> because it bothered him so much to have those strings on that frame carpet. And he would crawl around the floor and I would have to tell him, Carl, we're going to eat now. You need to stop. Stop cutting the carpet. <laughs> he was a perfectionist and he liked things of high quality. When I want to talk to someone about construction or home improvement or renovation, I think of Carl. Carl was a jack of all trades and a master of all trades. He helped us when we were converting a shed into Mia's little cottage that now is her and Chai's first home together. He spent hours there with us laboring just because he loved us and we were blessed when i want someone to talk current events with me i think of carl his insight to link what is transpiring today in the news and in this nation and in the world with what the word of god says prophetically was invaluable and inspiring to me carl is a man of god When I want someone to talk about the good old days, I think of Carl. Many times I would have to remind him when he brought something up and I wasn't sure what he was referring to, that he was older than I was. <laughs> he appreciated that. His life experience and time spent in the School of Hard Knocks begat some wonderful stories. And he was lively, and share things with joy and love and wisdom. And I appreciate that. And I learned so much from him. His knowledge of television and musicals was unsurpassed, even by me. And any time we would bring up something that we enjoyed in terms of an old movie or a musical, Carl could sing all the songs because he knew them all. When I want to talk to someone about church stuff, I think of Carl. Carl and Brenda moved down here to the Blue Earth area specifically to help us with this new church. And he was our head usher almost from the very beginning. And his heartbeat was for the success of Life Family Church being established and reaching Blue Earth. He was respectful and receptive to the office of the pastor, and his respect for God and for me as his pastor and for Jim as his pastor was something that Jim and I treasure, and Jim and I will miss him. Our church will miss him. When I want to take a group of hardy Minnesotans to the island of Jamaica in the blistering heat of the summer in August and have them do everything from explosive children's ministry to door-to-door -door evangelism to preaching in churches and drug rehabs and children's shelters and infirmaries, all with a great attitude and keep up with the 17 and the 18-year-old on the team, I think of Carl. And I think, oh, Carl. <laughs> and that's an inside joke. But I'll let you in. When we were on this missions trip, there were 10 of us, counting Carl, and many times Carl provided either the verbal or visual entertainment for the group. And many times, from the front of the bus, we would hear Travis say, oh, Carl. <laughs> and that trip changed his life. He came back so happy and on fire. He loved, loved, loved being a missionary. When I want someone to sit around a campfire and stay up all night telling jokes and silly stories and laughing until our belly hurts and morning breaks at a church camp out in my yard, I think of Carl. Remember that? 
We sat up all night long. When I want someone to love on my grandkids while they're here for the summer, being a special adult in their lives and help them to make memories that will last them for a lifetime, I think of Carl. I think of Carl and Brenda and what special input they've had into the lives of my grandchildren. So much so that my 14-year-old grandson, Connor, who is not here this summer, but he's come every year for the past six or seven years, he, uh, he wrote Mr. Carl a message to tell him how much he loved him and how much input Carl has had in his life. When I think of all those that have gone before us, and I'm looking forward to the time that we will all be together, surrounding the throne of the King, together again, singing his praises forevermore, I think of Carl. When I think of a life well lived, I think of Carl. So I want to share the scripture verses today that I believe are written about Carl. Out of Matthew chapter 25, and I know that you have heard this before, it's the parable of the talents. So when I think of Carl, I'm reminded of this parable that Jesus told. Matthew 25 verse 14 says this, For it is just like a man about to go on a journey, who called his own slaves and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, each according to his own ability, and he went on his journey. Immediately the one who had received the five talents went and traded them and gained five more talents. In the same manner, the one who had received the two talents gained two more. But he who received the one talent went away and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. Now after a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them, and the one who had received the five talents came up and brought five more talents, saying, Master, you entrusted five talents to me. See, I have gained five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful slave. You were faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many. Enter into the joy of your master. Also the one who had received the two talents came up and said, Master, you entrusted two talents to me. See, I have gained two more talents. And his master said, Well done, good and faithful slave. You were faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many. Enter into the joy of your master. I believe that what Emily said was profound. Carl was a rich man. He was gifted and talented by God and every single thing he used for the glory of the kingdom of God. Carl's life was a life well lived, not because he was perfect and not because he made no mistakes. He had struggles and regrets like everyone else. His life was well lived because it was a testimony to the goodness of God to save a man that humbles himself and gives his life to Christ. And then the transformational journey that ensues after that. Carl made the decision to follow Christ and then he pursued him with all of his heart. And with all that he did, he did it as an act of worship to God. I will finish with this. The Apostle Paul wrote to his son in the faith, Timothy, and he said this in 2 Timothy 4. The time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. In the future there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Emily, Morgan, Nicholas, Mark, Brenda. And then the young man that 
He's had such influence here. We have young men in this church, Jeff, Chai, Travis, Justin. All of, all of us who have experienced the goodness of God in knowing Carl can attest to this today that truly, Emily, he was a rich man. His love for his children and for the people in his life truly made him a rich man because he poured himself into everyone and considered himself a blessed man to have them in his life. As we mourn the loss of Carl today, it is our loss, not his. Let us be reminded of that. The reality of eternity reminds us that it is our loss, but not his. He knew exactly where he was going, and he stepped straight into the arms of the Savior he served with such strength and commitment, and is right now and was immediately in the presence of God with no pain, no sorrow, and no regrets. If you don't have that confidence today that you would do the same, I'd love to talk to you after this service and introduce you to the one that Carl loved and served with all of his heart. Then truly, you can follow in his footsteps and not only go to heaven when you die, but your life can be all that God has planned for it to be, like Carl's, a life well lived. To our sweet Brenda, to Emily, Nick, Morgan, Mark, all of Carl's family and loved ones here today, to those of us that have been touched by him in many different ways, may God comfort you and all of us as you grieve the loss of such a lively, vibrant, godly man. The Bible tells us to weep with those who weep. It is absolutely okay to cry. It also tells us that a day is coming that we will see Carl again. And in this, we can find great solace and comfort and joy. God bless you all. Thank you. Today we are going to have Brittany come and share. And she's going to sing a cappella, which is absolutely appropriate for this. Because just about every night of Carl's last month or so, Brittany would come. Sometimes her husband would come and play, but Brittany would come and sing. And she would just sing, and the presence of God would fill the room, and it would comfort Carl and bring him great peace. And so we're going to have Brittany come up and sing today.
words that can stay with you. And when you're hurting, that's what you need. Something simple to go back to. Mm -hmm. So when Brenda, Chris, Emily, all of, all of his very loved ones, just when you're thinking about him, when you get up in the morning and when you are feeling alone in you, and living your days, and you need something, remember that what you need is Jesus. And he is your everything. And he is your comfort. And he will walk you through it. My husband wishes he could have been here, but he couldn't get anybody to work for him. But he sends his love and he sends his prayers and he's thinking of everyone here. In the morning, when I you've said to him, well done, thou good
As we be here today, always remind us of Carl's example <clears throat> of a life lived for Jesus. Yes. Help us to all follow Carl's lead in our service to God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I knew if I said that, it would be. <laughs> Let me just speak a blessing over everyone today. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his covenant upon you and bring to his peace. Amen. Amen. So if everyone would remain seated, I'm going to escort the family out and downstairs, and Pastor Michelle will give us some further instruction. Amen. We're going to we're going to stay seated. Excuse me. Uh,